and welcome to Spiritual Keys with Ken and Sally. Thank you for joining us tonight. We trust these moments that we share together are meaningful to you as they are for us. We have a sense that we come together purposely, intentionally, to bridge a connection to each other and to God. And yet realizing the Father is within us, as is the Son. So that connection, in reality, is always within us. It's always been there. But in our joining or gathering outwardly, we bring our conscience focus from the external world to these moments together that we focus on a single intention. And that's to be aware of, mindful of, the presence of God and of the Word, hearing His voice within our being and resonating that voice in such a way that we are hearing one sound within all of us. And the more we come into that frequency of that one sound, and by the way, tonight's theme will continue from last week, tonight's theme being high praise. And with that thought in mind, we want to move in that higher dimension, away from our conscious perspective of our individual world to the larger picture where heaven begins to manifest itself in earth in such a way that we sense our corporate relationship in the larger picture, the greater force, the greater strength of God in the midst of his people. What is he saying? What is our direction? What do we need to hear? And what do we need to understand even concerning each other? How we are being joined even in our praise to the Lord. Well, thank you for joining us tonight again. Please let us know that you're watching. Just say hello or shout out wherever you are coming from right there on Facebook. And we're going to pray, and then Sally's going to be sharing the word with us. Father, we thank you for this moment. And we realize, though, we do not see you visibly. You know us from within as we know you. For we know that reality has nothing to do with human sight. But it has everything to do with truth, everything to do with divine knowledge. For we are the extension of your very being. By your will, you begat us. And we just thank you for resurrection power, awakening in us the light of truth, the power of the word, bringing each of us into a fuller scope of our divine function and purpose that your blessing may flow through us continually, even out into the world, to reveal the glorious presence of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to you. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Yes, we've got Louisiana in the house. <laughs> and a birthday blessing to you brother james thank you all for joining us tonight and blessing our hearts feeling the presence and the power of the life of the lamb of god who truly takes away our mistaken identity so that we can arise into our true authentic self Oh, it's a glorious self. It's full of Christ, our hope of glory. And tonight is the first session of, how do you pronounce it? Nice then. That. <laughs> and it is the first month. It's a beginning of months. So when we have a new beginning, isn't there fresh expectancy? A fresh hope well this word and I'm gonna say it my way Nissan it does mean a new day and a new day has a new sound and a new song if it's new it's 
inviting us out of the old and into a new trajectory, out of the box, and an invitation to a higher dimension. That's what I love about the life of the Lord. He's always calling us higher, better, more of his presence and more of his love. And this Hebrew month of Nisan, we know it's a month that the Israelites exited Egypt, a place of limitation. And I believe that's a type that God, our our director, Jesus is a chief musician. He is leading us somewhere. And the place where we're going is always better. And it has more of a harmonious sound, a symphonic sound. And it's blooming with resurrection, life, and power. And that power and all of the purposes is truly within our heart. We have been programmed, pre-programmed, oh, predestined, predetermined, truly for glory. We came from glory and we're returning into glory. And the more we put on our glorious praise, our glorious garments, the more we allow the king of glory access or space into our space so that David had this revelation. Whoso offers praise glorifies me and to him her I will show or I will demonstrate or I will unfold I will show the salvation of God God wants to be made strong within our lives meaning we're united we're gathered the tribe that is associated with this Hebrew month is guess what it is judah praise and in the blessing that was given to him it's amazing unto him judah praise this is in genesis chapter 49 verse 10 the last part of it unto him praise shall the gathering of the people be Oh, listen, as we gather unto Christ, as we collect our forces, as we recollect or remember, we gather up strength because God inhabits the praises of his people. God wants a people strong, victorious, who's truly mindful of his presence whoso offers praise glorifies me into him who orders his conversation right truly i pray this week we all are mindful of ordering directing our conversation our affirmations in the way of life of truth of praise so that the salvation of God, of love, of light, of glory will truly resonate from within us. It is all an internal work that God is wanting to do within a people. We're glorified from within. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And we are transformed from glory to glory in the same image what has our attention what has our focus and i just want to are you good yeah. i want to read from the psalms chapter 149 and maybe 150 just to give us an understanding of where god wants to take a people of praise so that we are 
gathered. Oh, a gathering unto him. Because as we even gather our attention, as we gather into the reality of Christ, there's a strength that comes. And God wants you stronger than you've ever been. He wants you full, full of praise and joy more than you've ever been. So Psalms chapter 149, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. Praise the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. And see, it's a new song because it's a new day. And we're seeing and feeling or sensing a new way. And his praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Oh, verse two. See, praise sets God in motion. Don't you want God, love, a flow of energy in motion in and through your life? As we order our conversation aright, he will truly move in a flow on your behalf. Verse 2, Israel shall be joyful in his maker. The sons of Zion shall rejoice in their king. Verse 3, they shall praise his name with dancing. Oh, and see, Jesus is a dancer. He dances over you with joy. The more we truly get in the presence of God, we flow with the harmony and the rhythm of heaven. They shall sing praises to him with a tambourine and a lyre. I mean, we're talking about a divine dance for a divine people of praise, high praise. For the Lord, verse 4, takes pleasure in his people. We really need that to be in our spirit. God takes pleasure in you delights in you he will glorify the lowly or the meek with salvation he wants us full of grace full of truth full of glory full of that purity full of that divine nature that we are a participator of verse 5 the godly ones shall be jubilant in glory. They shall sing for joy on their beds. Verse 6, And the high praises of God shall be in their mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. And what we speak and we sing, it resonates through our whole body. And a two-edged sword in their hand. The word is the two-edged sword. That is the power and that is the praise that gathers our whole being unto truly a glorious, victorious life in Christ. Listen to this. Verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the nations. This is a praising people and punishment on the people see when you have a victory song as the praises of god inhabit love and life oh good news the kings verse 8 to bind their kings with chains this is the earth realm and their dignitary was shackles of iron to execute against them the judgment written. This is an honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Meaning, as we offer praise, as we offer the right perspective on the enemies jesus said forgive them they know not what they do pray for your enemies and you know what god is wanting to swallow up all things into life into victory 
And as we allow the glory to truly resonate within us, there will be a flow of purity, of divine life, of divine love that resonates. And oh, what does it do? It gathers a people up into the higher dimensions of the life of the resurrected Christ. Judah, a life that prevails. Praise is what God wants on our lips. Truly, this week I pray that we order our conversation aright and get on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that we ascend into a higher dimension so we see further and oh have a, a vision of wholeness of glory of strength of beauty like god sees you beautiful glorious oh glorious things are spoken of you oh city of god over to you all right last week we referenced I spoke what had come out of my spirit. My or our mission is to establish God's praise in all the earth. Praise is a sound. It is a frequency. And there are a number of scriptures, particularly the writings of David, where it says, sing a new song unto the Lord. Well, one thing we know that David was a songwriter. He was constantly singing a new song to the Lord. David didn't have to repeat anything. It just flowed out of him in his adoration. What was the key to that? What is it in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost when Peter makes reference to David, speaking from a prophetic capacity of things that David had declared that were coming forth? How was David addressed? What reference was made to him? Was it because of the great sin he committed at a certain point in his life? No mention was ever made of that in the New Testament. But it says, I have found David to be a man after my own heart. There is a resonance, a residence as well, that is established through our praise. And the thing that I really feel tonight, particularly, the significance of establishing praise in this hour, because if we tune into social media, the news media, or other communications, we're going to hear very little praise. We're going to hear a lot of judgment, a lot of violence being spewed out, a lot of negativity, a lot of deceit. And you see, praise sets a higher frequency when it says sing the high praises of god let the high praises be in your mouth in fact this particular translation says let the high praises be in their throats well the throat is the voice box and that high praise can be more than just expression of words formed with our mouth but a sound coming from our inner being it's a frequency it's quite interesting these days that you'll find a lot of music referenced by the frequency. We use the frequency 440, which is very popular in our culture. I play the Native American flute. It's based on 432, which is a more natural frequency. But you can go on social media like YouTube, or YouTube and you'll see a number of presentations speaking of the higher dimension of praise, the divine dimension is up in the thousands, so to speak. Well, the idea is each frequency sets a dimension forth in the heavens that can only be heard at that frequency. Anything in a lower frequency moves more into the area of conflict or contrast. But the higher frequencies are harmonizing with heaven. Angels move in a higher dimension. They move in a higher frequency. And you see, when we give praise unto God, we engage the angelic realm. I had a word some years ago, and the Spirit of the Lord spoken that says, 
when people speak critically of one another, especially like critical of other ministers, he says angels withdraw. They want no participation in that. And you see, praise is the natural expression of love, affection, appreciation, honor. When we give praise, we are exalting or lifting up a higher standard. And what I was hearing earlier, sensing in my spirit, and I want you to hear this, and I hear it right now, my people need to establish my praise in the earth to distinguish themselves from the darkness. Okay? My people need to establish my praise in the earth to distinguish themselves from the darkness. If we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have communion. We have a common sharing or a common communication with others in that same dimension. We need to set a new standard. What is a new psalm? I've referenced this before. A new psalm essentially is a song that has not been sung before. Well, Many of us are accustomed into, in our services, however we attend, whatever nature of fellowship, we sing familiar songs. Nothing wrong with that, especially songs that come from Scripture. But you see, we do it sometimes just ritualistically. And the idea of singing a new song, it means it originates with you. It originates at that point where you are. Something new is coming to light, coming to life in your life or my life. And a new song, <coughs> excuse me, is not reaching back in the past out of something we are familiar with, but it's reaching forth to engage a dimension that moves us beyond our comfort zone, beyond our familiar space, what we're comfortable with in the sense of our familiarity in the world. But a new song, and David was constantly singing a new song. And a new song is just free and spontaneous. Whether it rhymes or doesn't rhyme is not the point. The word says, make a joyful noise. That's the throat. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, I shared just recently, but I'll do it again just for the point of reference. When I left pastoring a number of decades ago and was directed to go to South Louisiana. God would open up eventually a door of ministry there, but at first he said, just get a job working with your hands. Well, I got a job with, with a construction company. I worked in labor. And I worked with a, a group of guys. They were a nice, friendly bunch of guys, but their language and their thought communications were somewhat different from mine. Their subject matter was, was not exactly where I had come from. And so when they would extol the things that they were enticed by or lured by and tell jokes and things of that nature, I would just say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, I couldn't say you can't say that. You don't have the right to speak like that or don't say that around me. I just said, if you can curse him, I can praise him. And you know what? I began to do that, and it wasn't in any way to condemn them. It was to establish something they weren't familiar with. Because you see, I don't know how it is with women, but when guys get together, let's say just in a worldly person, uh, setting, we'll use it that way, they talk things that guys talk about, and they use the language that guys often use. And it's not necessarily uplifting. It's not necessarily spiritually edifying or has anything to do with spirituality. But when you begin to establish a new song or a new sound, because sometimes the songs that we're familiar with is a new song for somebody else. It's a new sound. And when we begin to express praise, as I did in the context on the job, now, I wasn't the boss. I was the low guy on the totem pole. I couldn't tell anybody how they could talk or couldn't talk, and it wasn't my intention to do so. I just wanted to establish my right to declare because I didn't want to have to feed on that all day long. 
and I was just establishing my right to offer praise and, and recognition of the presence of God. And you know what? It began to shift. It began to change. Sometimes they would just let out a stream of four out of words. Oh, sorry, preacher. <laughs> and and I would just say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And, you know, eventually they might say some four-letter word or whatever word. And, oh, praise the Lord. And I just smile. I just laugh. Why? I made them conscious of what they were establishing with their mouth. I made them to be aware of a presence that they weren't recognizing. And you know what? I know that two, very soon, came to receive the Lord as their Savior. I didn't directly lead them, but I knew I was an influence in making them aware of their need to establish God's purpose, presence, and power in their life. And you see, that frequency changed. The atmosphere changed. And you see, there was less friction, less conflict as a result. The point is, to establish God's praise is to set a higher order, to raise the conscience level from the things of this world that are so base, so familiar, so ordinary, and so meaningless. There's no value, there's no treasure to those things. But when we raise that level, reminding ourselves and reminding them your innermost being is not your ego. It's your spirit and your soul. And when we begin to establish that and something begins to resonate within them, it's like they become more aware of their own spirit. They become more aware of a light within them that has been hidden in the darkness. And we bring light. So when we see what the psalmist is saying, and there was a particular part of this, uh, where it says, let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. It brought back the picture in my mind when David led the procession bringing the ark into Mount Zion to a place that he had pitched a tent for David was the one dancing before the Lord with unabandoned shame. He just shamelessly, gloriously praised God and his very self-conscious, self-oriented wife, the daughter of Saul, despised him in her heart because it wasn't dignified. She felt it diminished her even before others. And she reproved or rebuked him how he shamelessly acted in front of the young maidens. And David just quickly replied that you haven't seen anything yet. I will be more abased in my own eyes, but in the eyes of those whom you speak, I will be honored. It is God who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. David never said a statement like that to my knowledge, but it's kind of like that's enough. I've heard enough. I will be honored, and I will honor God however it takes to express that. I will establish his praise because he's established my kingdom. Do we want God to establish our throneship, our heartship? Do we want God to establish our position in the earth because his kingdom is to be manifest through his authority through us. We are to, as he is, so be in this world. Whether it be in our job, our home, whatever situation, there is to be a presence that signifies we are holy to the Lord, not because we cut our hair or, or wear our clothes a certain way, but because of an honoring of the divine presence. Getting things in the right perspective. You see, the world has been turned upside down, and it's time for that to be reversed. And in that recognition, we want to establish the praise of God, giving honor, rather than speaking things that are debase, demeaning, depreciating, demeaning of others. We can lift up that atmosphere. 
we can raise it to a higher dimension. Elevate conversations. Elevate what is the, the term of in the, uh, in the office around the water fountain. There's a term they use for that. But elevate the conscious level of those that you're in the midst of through the praises of God. You see, that's part of how we established his authority in us. It is through us it must come. God doesn't come down of himself into our world. He is in us. And our extending that is that which we as the children of God, and particularly as sons of God, begin to manifest our Father's praise. Why? Because that's the alignment with heaven. That's the manifestation of the will of God in earth as in heaven. So let's become more conscious of praise. And I try to, sometimes I get agitated very easily over certain things that don't go right. And I realize I'm not praising God at that moment. And I realize the need, stop it. Don't give over to that. It's easy to do, especially when we develop the habit of doing. But you see, praise can become habitual as a response. Mm -hmm. And the more we do it, the more we lift up our awareness of the goodness of God in our life as a testimony. And the more we lift up his praise in our own atmosphere, the more we're reminded of the goodness of God eternally. If God be for us, who or what can be against us? Every good and perfect gift is continually coming down to us from the Father of lights, the Father above. Precious ones, let's shift our conscience expressions, our participation in conversations. Let's learn to raise. Be mindful when something starts going into a negative realm because so often it's just like that spirit wants to drag us into that and get caught up in that. And we know what it makes us feel like when we do that. But the moment we begin to establish God's praise, there's a power. You see, heaven joins with us. Heaven stands. The host of heaven are with us and stand ready. That's when you know you're not alone. You may be feeling alone in a group of people that are speaking negatively. But you begin to establish that, not in condemnation toward anyone else, not to rebuke them but to show them a better way, a higher way that we're all capable of. Amen? Well, may God's Spirit so direct each one of us this week to be more conscious. My mission is to establish God's praise in all the earth. I don't have to preach a sermon to anyone, but to voice, to express, and let that light shine. The world needs our light, precious ones. Because and the, you need the light. Yes, and the darkness is intensifying and becoming more gross in this world. But as darkness arises, so will God arise among his people. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon his people. Did you want to share an announcement at this point? Sure. Actually, I'd like to read another short passage but before i do just a reminder this saturday morning 10 a.m in boca raton we are having a live meeting emerge it's going to be a powerful moment i want to finish by reading psalms 150 this whole month of nissan is nice and <laughs> is very powerful and we won't get to this unless we get to it right now. And hear this. Let it get into your spirit. The word of God. Psalms 150. I'm going to read verse 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. This is where. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Two. Why? Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Verse 3. How? <laughs> Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. 
Praise him with the psaltery and heart. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instrument and organs. That is your being. Verse 5, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Verse 6, who is to praise him? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And again, praise ye the Lord. That, that everything that has life, praise him. That way, more life and energy comes to you. Oh, that's good news. When we awaken in the morning, before we get out of bed, just stop and offer praise in that silent, uninterrupted moment. Begin to give praise to your Father and to the Son. Give praise for the day and for God's favor. Set the pace of the day with praise and purpose in your heart. This day, I will find opportunities to release God's praise and to bring forth a new song, a new sound, to bring forth new things from heaven. And even right now, you can make an act of praise and post what you are praising God for right now on the comment. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you Saturday morning for those who are in this vicinity. It will be a wonderful moment together. Glorious things are happening. God's promise to us is to bring forth an unfolding, emerging realm of understanding of his kingdom. What is this moment about? Come see. Come be part of it. God bless you. Have a great night.